Hello everyone in Cyber World, welcome back to another video. I'm Richard. And I'm Jennifer, and this is our channel we call Poor Man's DIY. Today's video, we're going to review the Longer Ray 5 20 Watt Laser. Okay, once again, we've been very blessed and uh, we're now given the honor to review this uh, new laser. Um, we're gonna do things a little bit different. Uh, we, as we mentioned in the past, we know some viewers have said that they're not really interested in seeing uh, unboxing. But the idea on our video isn't so much to introduce this laser to people who are experienced with lasers. We wanna show what it's like for beginners, someone who's looking to see, should I even buy a laser? And so our review is going to be from very beginning, unboxing it, is it safe? packed, how good it's packed, how easy it is to put together and then uh, start using it for again primarily for beginners. Advanced, advanced people can hopefully use this video as well but it is geared more to beginners new to the laser world so let's get started by opening up the box. Okay first impression uh, right off the bat they've got some really good packaging material here. Everything seems to be in here very securely, well done. So I think you can feel pretty comfortable about when you order this, that it's not likely to be damaged. Uh, here are the rails, so let's go ahead and start unpacking this. Ah, we got the uh, laser head itself. And looks like the adapter. And power cord. Uh, there you go. Oh, interesting. So this comes with a uh, screen here that uh, we'll have to figure out exactly how good of an image that shows up on there. And the cables that come with it. Looks like we got a pair of safety goggles And a USB cable to connect to your computer. And uh, looks like these are some kind of a brace that will hold everything together. All right. Okay, so here's a closer look of everything uh, included. Uh, we also found some tools that were located inside. Um, they actually have these packages off and, and each one of these packages is identified as step one through step five, uh, which I assume is going to uh, relate to the user's installation guide. The only thing right off the top, I, I'm missing a step two. This doesn't say step two. It might just be a spare belt. Step two maybe doesn't have parts, but uh, that's the only thing I see for now. Uh, we won't say that's a bad thing, so let's go ahead and go uh, and continue. For step one, we're gonna use this package to assemble the frame. So first we're gonna slide the brackets into the slots and then we're gonna tighten it with the screw. Originally, I tightened the screw by hand, but now I'm gonna use the wrench. The frame, when I pick it up, is really solid, and actually, it's very light. Okay, step two, we're gonna attach the X-axis arm, and this is actually relatively easy. As you can see, there's two rollers on the top and one on the bottom on both sides. This is what's going to be gripping the side rails. So, take it from there. and it just rolls on. Now, if you lay this down, it's not gonna be flat right now. There's gotta be a base that holds this up, but right now, the rollers on the bottom are gonna be laying on the flat surface here, so it is gonna be a little wobbly. Step number three, we're going to add the support feet. Okay, now that we got the three support feet on, we're going to install the uh, control box. This control box is also made so that it becomes the fourth uh, foot of this to hold everything stable. And it's gonna go right there. The 
The last step on number three is we're going to take the isolation cylinder and place it on the side of the frame here, right in here. And that goes in right there. And this prevents the X axis from sliding off. In the user guide, it shows that the laser module right here is already installed, but this doesn't happen until step five. All right, now we're gonna put on the timing belt. Uh, we did this in advance. Uh, the instructions are pretty good and it shows that, that this has to go, the timing belt goes underneath the, the wheel here, then it goes over and there's a device here that has some teeth that the, the timing belt grips onto. Goes back to the other side and then down on the other end. Now on each end of the, the supports, you're actually gonna bolt it down using a bolt and a T uh, nut. And we're gonna show you how to actually install that. Okay, we begin by putting in the T shape screw as they refer to it. Take a bolt and start to tighten it. What you'll notice here is as you tighten it, the T-shape will start to turn and it will lock into place vertically here. There we go. And now gently tighten this. Don't over tighten it or the belt starts to twist. Okay, next we're gonna be installing these limit switches. What's really convenient is they put some labels, one here, one's kind of hidden underneath here, so you're gonna to have to look for it. But this tells you exactly where you want to install this. This also has a similar uh, T-screw as they talk about it before, and we'll put that in there, line it up where they tell you to, and as you tighten it, that T-square will rotate and grip inside the rail and keep this nice and tight. And we'll do the same for this one here. Kind of hard to see. Okay. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and install the laser module onto the X-axis here. There's a simple item here that fits into the grooves and it slides down. Now, this slides up and down and you need to be able to keep it in place depending on the item that you're going to be cutting or engraving. There are, it came with two screws and these are what's used to tighten and hold this module into place as such. Now, to be honest with you, so far of all the build, I've been really impressed with it. I'm not too keen on these handles. It's kind of awkward for me to get my fingers in there to tighten it and loosen it. Uh, you will find that if you're using different thickness of wood, for example, uh, that you have to adjust the height of this. And in doing so, you have to get into this tiny little screw thing to adjust it. Um, I'm used to having some larger uh, knobs to be able to uh, tighten this, but it works fine. It's just for me, that's one thing I wish they would make a little bit of a bigger uh, handle for this. Now we're going to take the cable that's part of the, the main control module and at each designated location we're going to go ahead and plug in all the wires in the appropriate slots. So the first slot we're going to lift up here and on the bottom the plug will actually go in here. If you notice there's a couple grooves on this side and this side is flat. You will see that there's a couple grooves. So there's only one way to put this in. If you try to put it in backwards, it will not fit. And make sure it, it oh, make sure it's in there all the way. Okay, next. Okay, for this next part, these cables are actually marked with a Y and an X. This beam that goes across here, this is the x-axis, these are the y-axis. So that helps you to, to know which one. The, the y is gonna go in over here. Same thing as the other plug, there are two slots that are actually gonna fit in here. And it just plugs in like that very easily. We're gonna tip this up and connect this underneath here. The last two connections, this one has an x, this goes to the x-axis. Again, we're looking for the two notches. There's only one way for it to fit. And that's this way, get in there and it snaps in. And this one here is gonna go into this little bit of a bugger there. I think I'm gonna have to get some pliers to do this one. So now this is all assembled, we're gonna go ahead and connect it to the power and test it out. 
This is the part of the video where we stop the sound. During the holidays, Hawaii has lots of fireworks display that go throughout the night and throughout the day. This was constantly interrupting our video. The Ray 5 control panel is extremely well lit and easy to read. Using the controls, you can easily set the location of the laser head for cutting and engraving. You can even connect it to Wi-Fi. In our case, out in the garage, where connectivity is not the best, we selected to use the USB connection. We believe the very first thing you should engrave and cut are tests. Lightburn has a built-in feature that allows you to create a test grid using different speeds and power levels to see how it cuts and engraves. So we're going to do that first. There is an optimal distance for the laser head to be from the surface of the material being cut. The Ray 5 laser module has an arm that you drop down to set the distance and then return the arm to the upright position. Critical safety point. Always, always wear protective safety glasses. When using lasers, it only takes a fraction of a second for a laser to cause permanent damage to your eye. Alright, so here are the results from the actual test for cuts that I made uh, using the, the uh, testing from Lightburn. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but you're going to see that if you use high power and slow speeds, that means that the laser is just staying at one area for a longer time and for a stronger strength. And what happens there is you start getting a lot of burning as opposed to a clean cut. But uh, as you look at this grid and you'll see different speeds, some of the uh, speeds that are too fast and the power is too low doesn't actually cut through. And you can see on the back here that it didn't even make it through the wood itself. So, but using this particular test, you can then see that these that actually have holes in them means that it, we're, we're able to cut through. So you want to find one that is a clean cut that doesn't use as much power as, as possible or as little power as possible and that doesn't have any charring on here. So uh, if you use something that's less than 100% that's uh, less uh, strain on your, your laser and uh, it should last longer in theory. Okay again this is just uh, the test for the cutting and this here I think I have it upside down. Okay, this here is the test for engraving. Now, I actually did the test at some really slow speeds and some higher uh, power level, and though it did not cut through, uh, the speeds were too slow and too powerful that it just, it just charred the top of this. You definitely don't want any of these settings. Now, you can look at this particular chart here and you can decide which one of these colors or shadings is ideal for when you want to engrave. Keep in mind this test is for this particular wood. If I use a different piece of wood, it could give totally different uh, um, results. So if you're going to be running any kind of test, make sure you run a test for every single product that you're going to be engraving or, uh, or cutting. Now we're going to use the included sample piece of wood to engrave something simple. For such a quick test, that turned out nicely. For the next test, we are going to see if the Ray 5 can cut through a 10 millimeter thick board. Based on the first try, it did get close to cutting through the 10 millimeter board. I increased the power level and lowered the speed, but it really burned the wood. After trying several different speeds and power levels, it actually did a nice job cutting the wood.
We are now ready to test out the machine and actually make something. Okay, as we keep mentioning in this video, this is uh, primarily designed for the, the beginners. Although we did make a very simplistic Ta -da. product, uh, this is by no means a, a true picture of what's, what you're capable of doing with a laser. Uh, we just wanted to be able to show you that right out the box, how you set things up, and we wanted to test uh, how well this particular laser worked, and we wanted to show you that you can make something as simple as this very quickly, and once it was done, Jennifer added a little bit of her own color touch to it and flavor to make it even nicer. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into the final conclusion and tell you what we think about this. Okay, so in conclusion, um, Overall, I was really thrilled uh, with this particular laser. Uh, I liked the power that it had and the ability to cut through the 10 millimeter uh, board. Uh, I now have some ideas of things that I'd like to try that I've never done on anything that thick. Uh, we'll see how things go with that. Um, overall, uh, I, this is definitely a recommended uh, uh, product for us that uh, we are happy that we have. Uh, it was, it was um, a little bit confusing on the installation instructions uh, that some of the pictures didn't quite line up to what we had in front of us. I don't know if that was the picture's fault or is my fault for not being able to understand what was going on uh, on the instructions. If there were any kind of recommendation that I would make, I would make to the company and suggest that maybe they can um, uh, assemble some of this together uh, at the factory and make a larger box. I realize it'll be a little more uh, expensive to ship a larger box to, to customers, but if it's pre-assembled a little bit more, I think a beginner, for example, might uh, might find it easier to be able to take it out of the box and get ready right away, rather than have go through all the steps of putting it together. Since we're familiar with how lasers work, we understand how it, the final result is going to need to look, it, it made it a little bit easier for us, but I just worry about uh, especially the belt uh, the, the, that had to be added was a little bit confusing even for us on how it had to be installed overall it, it took less than an hour to assemble so it wasn't a bad thing but if we're if we're looking at uh, trying to get this for a beginner it might take a few extra minutes to figure it out or a beginner might actually be smarter than me and be able to get this whole thing done in, in just a matter of minutes so anyhow we are very pleased with this thing and it is definitely a two thumbs up yay from us we really like to thank longer for sending us a ray 5 20 watt laser for review next week's video we're going to show you how we built a workbench for our garage so until then bye bye, bye, -bye.